Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV episodes that were so good, they were a cultural reset. It's gonna be a lovely day, isn't it? I'm afraid so. For this list, we'll be looking at the most legendary television episodes that continue to resonate with wide audiences. Plot points will be discussed, so beware of spoilers ahead. Which episode left you speechless? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, The Last Show, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. I'm very sorry I troubled you, you little runt. <laughs> This groundbreaking series was a bastion for second-wave feminism, as we watched Mary Richards unapologetically choose her career over marriage. As the show concluded its iconic run, fans wondered how it would end. And it didn't disappoint. The news program's low ratings led to firings, and unfortunately, Mary loses her job while the one responsible Ted gets off scot-free. You know what bothers me? Here you are, the people I work with, my best friends. You're all of you losing your jobs, and I'm keeping mine, and... I don't feel that bad. <laughs> Sound familiar? The episode's memorable climax features a heartfelt and hilarious group hug that has left a lasting impact. Not just that, its incredible writing has influenced countless works. It even inspired Friends' own series finale. Given its perfect balance of sentimentality while avoiding corniness, we can see why. Oh, it's a long way to temporary. To the sweetest girl I know. Number 9. Dinner Party – The Office With its mockumentary style, The Office brilliantly captures the mundane monotony of the average 9-to-5 job, delivering endless hilarious moments. This is Michael Scott, Scranton. Well, we don't want to work. No, we don't. It's not fair to these people. These people are my friends and I care about them! Michael, the lovable but often clueless boss for most of the show's run, is relentless in getting his staff on board with his ridiculous antics. In this episode, he invites other office couples to a dinner party with his girlfriend and former boss, Jan. When I get frustrated or irritated or angry, I come up here and I just smell all my candles. And it just poof, goes away. Just like that. Just like that. As the evening progresses, Jan and Michael's dysfunctional dynamics unravel before our eyes. Many have pointed out that the bizarre tension is reminiscent of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and we have to agree. Adding to the fun is the fact that a lot of improvisation took place. This extra layer of authenticity adds to the comedic brilliance of this dinner party from hell. I guess that makes me the devil! <laughs> you are! She is! She is the devil! I'm in hell! Number 8. Previously on, WandaVision. But what is grief, if not love persevering? This buzzworthy series breaks away from the typical MCU formats, as Wanda and Vision navigate life and their powers in Westview in the 1950s and beyond. The episodes take on different characteristics of various sitcom eras. Naturally, we soon learn that there's more to this seemingly perfect world than meets the eye, and that it's actually all Wanda's doing. Magic on autopilot! What's your secret, sister? In this pivotal episode, the veil is lifted as MCU fans get official confirmation of Wanda's identity as the Scarlet Witch. Though a clever use of the clip show trope, glimpses of Wanda's origins provide deeper insight into her character, making her feel layered. By the same token, many remaining story blanks are filled in. Is it any wonder the episode was an MCU defining moment? Wanda. Welcome home. Number 7. Sammy's Visit – All in the Family This show follows a working-class family in Queens dealing with intergenerational tensions. The dad, Archie, is known for his unwavering prejudice. Oh, Hutch, what do you gotta say things like that for? <laughs> what do you mean, what do I gotta say things like that for? What did I say, anyhow? In this episode, fate grants him the privilege of taxiing Sammy Davis Jr., who mistakenly forgets his briefcase. Archie then boasts about his encounter, before Davis Jr. drops in to pick up his belongings. Mr. Bunker? During the visit, he hears Archie's bigotry bubbling to the surface. When the pair get set to take a photo, Davis Jr. takes the opportunity to give Archie a peck on the cheek. This episode deftly explores race relations in the 70s, confronting bigoted views through an adored public figure. 
It's a comedic masterclass that skillfully balances sensitive dynamics and delivers thought-provoking storytelling. To watch Bunker, the whitest guy I know. <laughs> Number 6, Episode 6, Fleabag. Armed with her razor-sharp wit, the show's titular character navigates the absurdity of existence. I want you to leave me. Listen to me. I just, I have... I think he has a little speech. I have a little speech that's building here. In the series finale, her relationship with the hot priest reaches critical mass. When he catches her breaking the fourth wall earlier in the season, the boundaries between fiction and reality delightfully blur. We lost a week. What was that? What? Eventually, the narrative device, previously used for character development, comes to signify the end of Fleabag's detachment. In the end, things don't work out between her and the priest, but they also don't work out between us and her. As Fleabag bids us farewell, we can't help but get emotional. However, this poignant moment empowers her to seek a genuine connection with someone who understands her. It's a powerful conclusion that leaves viewers simultaneously yearning and inspired. See, I've been having me a real good time. Number 5. Lucy is Ascent. I Love Lucy. During a time when networks still clutched their pearls at showing married couples sharing a bed, this episode danced around a basic biological reality, pregnancy. You don't suppose you're gonna have a baby? Oh, of course not. <laughs> For heaven's sake. When Lucy discovers she's pregnant, breaking the news to Ricky becomes her comedic mission. However, the network reportedly didn't even allow the show to utter the P word for fear of upsetting audiences. Oh, that's all right. You're bound to be a little cranky in your condition. <laughs> I am not cranky! Thus, the episode cleverly uses the French term for pregnant in its title. In the script, the characters adhere to the word expecting to dance around the restriction. Through it all, though, they get the message across. The episode is, for one thing, a great watch. On top of that, its success signaled a leap towards authentically portraying the joys and challenges of family life. We're having a baby. Number 4. Connor's Wedding – Succession A mega hit for HBO during its run, Succession depicts a family that owns a powerful media conglomerate and their struggles against each other for power. I just, I just want to congratulate you Don't on everything. Don't touch me. Throughout, we watch the Roy family plot and scheme to win favor from their father, Logan. However, on the oldest sibling's wedding day, the patriarch passes away on a flight, and we see a family put aside snide remarks to begin mourning. Frank thinks he's gone. Although they're astronomically wealthy, the characters' true desires are shown, their father's love. Each actor delivers a standout performance, capturing the complex emotions that come with facing and ultimately accepting such a tremendous loss. So what we do today will always be what we did the day our father died. These performances come together with a fantastic script to beautifully expose the fragile humanity beneath the surface of power and wealth. Number 3. Abyssinia Henry – MASH For years, the U.S. Mobile Army Surgical Hospital provided us with a mix of laughter and tears thanks to the show's unique blend of comedy and drama. All together now. Oh, Shepherd, God, Wisconsin, fight right through that line. Set against the backdrop of the Korean War, MASH became renowned for its clever integration of humor and heartfelt storytelling. In the third season finale, Henry Blake tragically passes away during an attack off-screen. Lieutenant Colonel, Henry Blake's plane was shot down over the Sea of Japan. This stunned viewers and prompted many letters detailing their reactions. For context, before this point, American television shows didn't kill series regulars when actors decided they wanted out. But that's precisely what M.A.S.H. did here. The creators seized a chance to touch on the horrible unpredictability of war, and the result speaks for itself. Mish 4077 bids Henry Blake a reluctant and affectionate farewell. Number 2. College – The Sopranos Dad, how come you didn't finish college? I had that semester and a half at Seton Hall. Yeah, and? 
Although many cite Pine Barrens as their favorite, this episode takes the prize as The Sopranos' best. When Tony takes his daughter to visit a prospective college, she asks him if he's in the mob. Are you in the mafia? Am I in the what? We already know the answer's yes, but his denial tells us he's afraid she'll see him as a hardened criminal. Later on, he sees someone from his past who's cooperated with the feds. After Tony eliminates the guy, we don't see him as his daughter does anymore. You took an oath and you broke it. Sure, we know what business he was in, but knowing and really seeing are two different things. Now, he's not just the beloved family man, he's a complex anti-hero who defies conventional notions of morality. This episode redefined our understanding of the character and left an indelible mark on television history. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Who Do You Kill? East Side, West Side. A gut-wrenching episode that shines a light on racism and classism in New York City. Why you got a white coffin? Is that supposed to make it nicer? Why? Vincent and the Doctor, Doctor Who. Even non-Whovians shed tears at this look at Vincent van Gogh's legacy. Pain is easy to portray, but to use your passion and pain to portray the ecstasy and joy and magnificence of our world, no one had ever done it before. Perhaps no one ever will again. Plato's stepchildren, Star Trek. This interstellar gem gave us one of television's first interracial kisses. Seven proxy authentication required, Mr. Robot. Our favorite hacker uncovers a painfully dark secret from his past. Elliot, look at me. Why do you think you had such a strong reaction when your father came into the room? Remedial chaos theory, community. Seven different timelines are explored, and it's seven times the fun. continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Ozymandias – Breaking Bad Driven by the need to cover exorbitant medical expenses, Walter White harnesses his chemistry skills to construct a drug empire. As the narrative unfolds, we witness Walt's thirst for power gradually overshadowing his initial motivation to take care of his loved ones. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Nowhere are the consequences of this transformation more brilliantly portrayed and explored than in Ozymandias. As Walt witnesses the death of his brother-in-law, Hank, his entire existence collapses. Do what you're gonna do. Director Ryan Johnson ingeniously used dirtied puzzle pieces to magnify the impact of the deeply powerful shot. The episode was so emotionally intense that even Betsy Brandt, who portrayed Hank's wife, once said she couldn't bring herself to watch it in its entirety. You're never going to see Hank again. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.